Kate and I both have little crushes on each other, but I feel like we both were very open saying, you know, probably not now. We don't want to jump into anything just because we want things to calm down a little, but it's nice to have someone caring about you. It's interesting the fact that um, Zach tried to play dirty and tried to steal Lucinda from Nate and now Tia is making it known that she is still interested in Nate and you know but she wants to take things slow she just doesn't want to rush things just in case I think she's worried that if they rush things then things won't work out so she wants to go at a slow pace so I have a feeling that Tia and Nate are going to end up together and poor Reed had better start grafting if I were him I would have grafted um, Nakia because Sav is gone. Sav is playing the game. But I, if I would read out Graft Nakia. But anyway, I digress. Hey there. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Um, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We're still trying to get to 1,000 subs. Thanks to everyone who subscribed. Click the like button. Turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos. And definitely leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Love Island Australia Season four, 5, Episode 4. Oh, I got twisted there. <laughs> Zach gets on my last nerve. I know I was agreeing with someone that I really dislike. Well, I don't know him as a person, but I hate how he's decided to move around in Love Island. He's suddenly had this thing in for Nate for no apparent reason. Nate stood forward for a couple of girls on day one. They didn't choose him. He stood back and let whoever choose him, choose him. And the, he allowed the girl to decide that she she wanted to friend zone him and he was okay with that and so for zach's ego to be that bruised that he feels the need to bring down somebody else doesn't make sense and given the fact that lucinda has already been on love island one would assume she would be more advanced than to be played by zach it doesn't make sense the producers at times they're producing doesn't make sense as well because if they think that people are so gullible that they would buy that lucinda could be played and then the next minute she's kissing this man they must be kidding they must be kidding unless they set it up that way because they wanted this love triangle i didn't like it because i'm happy that savannah <laughs> so savannah went and had a conversation with nate and so they they sort of discussed you know what's going on between sort of uh zach pursuing Lucinda and then Sav sort of suggested maybe he pulls you know Lucinda for a chat because Lucinda was now avoiding Nate and it's like well if you really like Zach that much and if you have nothing to do with you know Nate why are you running away from Nate he hasn't done anything to you if you don't like him anymore if you don't think he's your type then leave him um and so when Nate pulled her I, I think the thing is Lucinda developed feelings for Nate on the on the spot i think she really liked him on site and developed feelings for him and because of that the producers because uh zach managed to make himself indispensable they decided to bring zach into this equation just because they don't want to lose zach because they feel like he's going to be their version of mitch if you've watched love island uk you'll know who mitch is because once she starts having a conversation with 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 Nate, she sort of brings up the fact that, you know, this is what Zach told me and we went upstairs and we're doing our conversation and we kissed. And he said, okay, if I, and I have to give credit to Nate because he didn't say anything disrespectful about Zach. He didn't try and bring him down. He just said his piece. She said her piece and he told her, you were my number one. I told everyone you're my number one and that's it. And I like his control how he's able to control his temper if i could be like that when i grow up i'll be amazing because oh my god he didn't even scream he didn't shout he was very peaceful and lucinda regretted although she said oh i wish i had picked zach i think she regretted the decision her choice to kiss zach and it's really going to be painful for her to watch all the other girls now pursue nate I think the girls are taking a step back from Nate because of her. Now that she has said, you know, she's not interested, she wants to go to Zach, they're going to move in on Nate and we're going to see somebody cry. Anyway, um, so he then has a, a conversation with Ollie and I'm happy that he chose Ollie. I think he realized that the other two guys are Zach's minions, so it's pointless. And the new guy, the, the new bombshell read, it didn't make sense. So it makes sense that he pulled aside Ollie and had a conversation and was able to vent because I think if he hadn't vented, 
things would not have worked out the way they did. And I'm happy that he vented first. And then he went and had a conversation with Zach. And Zach was now dancing all over the place. I feel like Zach is intimidated by Nate. The fact that Nate is quiet and confident with it. And he's got this swagger about him. I think this is what intimidates Zach. And so the idea that how can this person you know, be attracting more girls than me is what is bugging him. And this is why he's running behind every sort of girl or every everyone that sort of shows interest in Nate to sort of try and put them off Nate. That's the impression that I'm getting. I don't want to say it's a race thing, but hmm, starting to look that way because why else would he be going so hard on Nate and not everybody else? I don't know what upsets me more, whether it's the audacity to lie straight to someone's face or the fact that he has so much hate and disregard for someone that he would come up with lies. Because you have Zach in the bedroom sort of speaking to the guys and sort of saying, oh, you know, Nate, well, I don't think he's ever spoken to a girl outside of this experiment. He doesn't need to speak to girls. They come like moths to a flame. So why should he be chasing after anyone? The fact that, you know, he's so intimidated and he's got this hatred for, 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 for Nate that's making him come up with lies and come up with ways of sort of one arm. Ping Nate doesn't make sense. Even Ollie said, it doesn't make sense that you would want to talk down somebody so that you can look good in somebody else's face. That shows that your game is weak. And his game is weak. This is why he's doing this. I think I'm really trying not to call him what I feel like it's all about, but I think people that can see it can understand it and can 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 recognize it because why is he not having a problem with Ollie? Why is he not having a problem with Ben? Why is he not having an issue with Trent? Even read the new guy. His problem is the fact that the girls were all saying they like Nate. And the fact that how can they like Nate when we are here is his problem. It's not the fact that he wants Lucinda, no. It's the fact that he's, he's wondering how is it the, all these girls, with us all here, prefer Nate over us. Instead of him asking Nate, you know, give me some swag. Tell me how to speak to girls. Tell me how to do this. Instead of him doing that, he's decided to talk down Nate. I, Nate has got so much control. I would have lost it. I would have lost it. Anyone would have lost it. So Nate has a lot of control and recognizes for what it is and has decided to just keep quiet. And because of the villa and the fact that you'll need other people to save you in, in an elimination, I think this is why Ollie kept quiet. In his elimination, he told the truth, but inside the co conversation, he just kept quiet or maybe it was edited out. I don't know. I really have so much distaste for Zach because Mitch did it, but Mitch would, wouldn't do it in such a malicious way. Mitch did it just for drama, just for the sake of drama, just because he wanted to stay on the show. This is very malicious and sort of calculated in how Zach is doing whatever he's doing. So the Islanders get ready for the night and, you know, they go for their drinks and Zach does this toast. I don't get how his boys don't see how much of a snake he actually is in the sense that I don't get how they don't pick up on some of the shady stuff that he does. And so he has this toast, you know, oh, to, to fight and whatever. And you can see Nate is very controlled. I don't think anyone else in the villa would have been able to contain themselves the way Nate has been navigating this. And if Nate blows up, then people say, oh, look at him, look at how he's reacting. But it's not his fault. People forget that uh, this uh, genius, for lack of a better word, is the one who's poking him and trying to look for a reaction. Anyway, um, then you have Sav and Trent. I don't even know where that relationship came from. That's a producer relationship. That's a producer sort of coupling that they've decided to keep Trent. They've decided to keep Sav. And the only way they can keep them in is sort of couple them up with people that they feel should be on the show. That's the impression that I'm getting. Because if they get rid of Trent, then Zach is on his own. Because it seems Trent is his dumb and dumber. And he's the one who feeds him and boosts his ego and allows him to be the jackass that he is. So um, Tia then goes for a chat with read and sort of explains that she's done with with Trent she doesn't want to talk to him she doesn't want anything to do with him Trent is busy telling Sav oh you know what's going on in the girl's room she then tells him oh Tia said you're horrible and it's like why this high school drama we don't need this high school gossip anyway she Tia then says you know she is 
done with Trent. And that's when it comes out that, uh, you know, Zach was telling the guys that, you know, uh, Nate said his, his number one is Tia. And Tia said, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. We all know that Lucinda is number one. So I don't know what, what, where Zach is getting it from. So everyone else can see that Zach is playing games. I don't know how Lucinda can see this. And Zach takes Lucinda to the fire pit and is busy. Oh, you know, he was upset with me. He's making a big deal out of nothing. Are you sure? Would you be this calm if he did the same thing to you? Make it make sense? And I can't get how Lucinda... Seriously, second time around and you're being played like a little child. Make it make sense? So it's interesting. The Islanders get a game that they, you know, it's an 80s playlist. So it's a playlist. And so they have these cassettes that they have to put in this radio and then it plays and, you know, they're given tasks to do. I think they thought it was music. And some of them were a bit strange in the sense that Ollie was asked to twerk. Reed was asked to kiss a tree. Um, Trent was asked to kiss someone he wouldn't want to be stuck in a lift with. And he went straight for a tear. His feelings are hurt. And it's the immaturity between Zach and Trent that is just shocking. And then <laughs> obviously Nate was asked to kiss, you know, the island that he would like to turn on. And he went in for Tia. And Lucinda was in her feelings. And it's like, why are you in your feelings? You said you made a mistake by choosing Nate and you're happy with Zach. So leave it out. Leave them alone. She's now understanding that she made a mistake. I hope it burns her because she had him and she lost him because she listened to gossip, which is very sad given this is her second go round on Love Island. I will keep bringing that up. This game is messy. Tia is then asked to kiss, you know, someone other than her partner. So obviously she goes in for Nate. And Lucinda's in her feelings because she said, oh, surprising. They don't want to get to know one another, but they, you know, they seem to be enjoying the kiss. And it's like, you told him you were not interested. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. You went for Zach, so that's it. Um, and Reed, poor Reed, because that kiss went on. And on and on. So he turned her on and then he gave her a kiss that rocked her boots. So <laughs> it is what it is. Zach was then asked, you know, pick your crush and, you know, ask her to do your favorite sex position. And it's just laying there. And it says, Tia, sit on top of me. And it's like, seriously, that put her off. And sadly for her, she opened the door for someone else to walk in and Z Nate is gone for, for, for Jackass. So good luck to you and well done. Um, Tyra is asked to kiss two guys and, you know, shake hands with her least favorite. So she kisses Ben because she's been wanting to kiss Ben and she's in a couple with him. And then she goes for Reed. I think she went for Reed because she, there was a time she was saying she likes Nate. But I think she didn't want to kiss Nate, especially after her friend had kissed Nate. So I think she went for the person that she thought was neutral. So she gave him a pack and then shook Zach's hand and she said she would never couple up with him. And I said, kudos to you, girl. Who would want to couple up with Zach? Zach is, pull, is full of... He's full of it. I won't say what it's full of, but hey, it is. So you have Trent go up and for his second go round and he's asked, you know, to whisper the sweet nothings to his favorite girl in the villa and he does to Zav. That's a strategic coupling. I think um, Zach told him that if you want to stay in the villa, you're more likely to be kept here if you stay with Sav because Sav can be toxic and that will give you more attention than you being with Tia. I think that's the impression that I get. Anyway, next up is Zach. He's like, oh my God, I've got a second chance. I think he was, he thought he was going to be told to do something sexy and he, will, he was either going to try and in my opinion, I think if they had asked him to do that, he was going to try and wind Nate up by going after Tia, knowing that Nate had kissed Tia. But anyway, he was told, you know, a new bombshell is coming, Kale. And he got excited, I think, because he thought it was a new girl, only to realize that it's a guy. Kale apparently is 25. And so Kale, you know, the girl started asking him. They say he looks like Machine Gun Kelly cross Pete Davidson. Hmm, I don't know. I didn't say it, but it is what it is. Um, And so asking him, do you have a winner like Pete Davis was a bit off. I, I was surprised by that. But anyway, he was then asked to kiss his top three and he went for Nakia, Tyra and Kira. And they were all excited. And you could see <laughs> poor Ben was shaking in his boots when he went for for Tyra. I hope he go, he pursues Tyra because of the way Ben, Zach and Trent have been behaving. Somebody needs to humble them and I'm here for it. 
He seems very calm like Nate, so I hope they become friends and they, you know, ruin it for these three dumb, dumb, dumbers. It's interesting that, you know, Kale, after the game, sort of pulls the girls immediately for a chat and he starts off by speaking to Bronte's sister. Bronte's sister is not having any luck, I'm sorry. It seems all the guys are sort of friend zoning her. I don't know why. I think she's cute. I think, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to assume, but I really don't get why the boys are not finding her attractive or are not willing to sort of pursue something romantic with her. Yes, she shot herself in the foot by friend zoning her person that she was in a couple with i think she thought that if she did that then she would get a lot of offers and sadly she didn't get any offers and now she's stuck um with no one because ollie is still out there on his own um so then he goes for tyra and tyra was sort of dismissive at the start i think she didn't see herself having any connection with him and then through talking to him you could see that she she was starting to to create a connection there and as i said it before these people on love island i've noticed when they go on dates the person they go on the date with the last is the one they like because they want to spend the most time with and lastly he went on his date with nakia and he really seemed to vibe with nakia um they really got on well so i don't know i feel sorry for kira though because kira was saying she manifested the guy with blonde hair and tattoos and piercings and <laughs> it seems the guy is not interested in her. So poor thing. She can't go to read because of the history with her sister. Now it seems, uh, you know, Nakira is the one who's going to take the bomb, the latest bombshell. So I hope she finds someone. I really do because I don't want her to go home. It's too early for her. And I don't think they would want to send her home immediately though. I think they would want her to stay because of her sister's fan base. I really don't get Lucinda's plan. But anyway, um, so you have Nate and tia sit down and have a conversation i love that they sat down and were honest with one another after the challenge and they sort of discussed what the future holds for the two of them i know they want to take things slow but i think tia needs to be careful that she doesn't sort of put nate off by constantly making out with every other guy because i think that's what put her off what i think that's what put him off the first time when tia made up with trent and so i hope she doesn't you know, decide to start making out with Reed in bed because then once she loses Nate, that's it. Um, and so the Islanders prepare for bed. And I don't get where Lucinda's coming from because I think whatever she's doing with Zach, I think is to try and make Nate jealous because I personally feel Lucinda has feelings for, for Nate, but she wants to appear as though she doesn't care, as though she's moving on to Zach, but it doesn't make any sense to me. You have sav and trent sleep outside and it's um, tia is right to say that it's more a lust relationship and I, I can see that and i can understand that um and so i don't know we'll see how that plays out and the producers as i said are messy they keep wanting this you know this triangle with nate and nate is not interested really so i don't know why they put you know nate and lucinda and zach and it's like make it make sense that doesn't make sense but anyway everybody goes to sleep the producers are terrible their uh, their producing is terrible and it's so predictable because on his date trent takes because he receives a text message to choose two girls to take on a date i thought he would go with kyra and nakia uh, but he decides to go with nakia and um tyra and it's uh, make it make sense that doesn't make sense especially given the fact that tyra kissed ben yesterday and they were making out in bed so that doesn't make sense to me anyway um for his first date he chose to have a conversation with nakia and it's like i thought you would have kept nakia last are they trying to be unpredictable or what their conversation seemed amazing she seemed ecstatic you know that he had chosen her and she was very giddy and sort of school girlish so that was good i was a bit worried when she said to him you you initially you are not my type and it's like oh, be mindful of what you say but then you have at the villa you have um you know Kyra sort of upset that none of the guys are really liking her romantically and it's like the producers are going to produce that's why they are producing they want to humble her they want to humble her because she thinks she's coming with a lot of smoke from mav so they want to humble her and make sure that none of the guys like her that's the impression that I'm getting and it's really sad
I'm going to say the producers are messy. They really are. And I think the reason why they brought in Kale was because they wanted to split uh, Ben and Tyra because they don't want any couples to lock each other in on the first try. Because they seem to have had an amazing time on their dates and they really enjoyed themselves and they enjoyed each other's company. So it's going to be interesting because even when they came back, they were holding hands and then she quickly let go. And it's like, why are you letting go? You know, you like him, you were holding his hand. Why do you feel the guilt to sort of withdraw your hand? Is that because you've developed feelings for him or what? Uh, ben is going to have his heart broken because Sav was trying to say to him, are you not worried that, you know, and he was, oh no, I've got a locked in, nothing will happen. And it's like, uh, you guys are so dumb, dumb, dumber. You, you're so confident in yourself until somebody shows you that, you know, you might lose and then you start playing dirty. So we'll see how it plays out. And it was interesting that as soon as Tyra started talking about her day to the girls, um, you could see on, on, and Nakia's face that she was worried she was worried because I think she realized that oh maybe he, he's not feeling me as much as I'm feeling him which is sad but hey it is what it is that's the name of the game thanks guys for watching please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 3 bye guys